Hey, thanks for tuning in to Larger Curves today. Make sure you smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. I am sharing with you today um, an interview that was done post-reunion with Chris Bassett addressing Candace Bassett's um, comments about the recently deceased black socialite. And um, you guys take a look at this. Leave a comment below on whether or not you think that Chris Bassett was being disrespectful to this host who has a lot of energy for the Bassetts um, behind Candace supposedly wishing a form of death on to the recently deceased Kyle from the Black Socialite IG account, which was... Um, widely reporting on the skewed fight. So the Black Socialite website had been reporting allegedly on Monique's behalf and was the one who said that Candace threw the glass and all this stuff in press from the beginning last year. Anyway, backstory is that the Bassets were attacked, allegedly, uh, according to them, they were attacked and by this black socialite website. And the socialite website was going after Chris Bassett's kids and calling him a deadbeat dad and all this other stuff, all because Monique lost control and beat up Candace Dillard, assaulted Candace Dillard on national TV, and then had her husband, Chris um, Samuels, threatening women on national TV. Not a good look for the Samuels all the way around. Um, so now the drama is continuing. It's 2021, and the drama is continuing. Why don't you go ahead and take a look at this interview between... Um, Mr. Allen and Mr. Chris Bassett regarding the comments that Candace made in the heat of the moment after being attacked on social media by that website. She made a comment, something like, I wish he would die or he doesn't need to breathe or something like that, she said. And, you know, people say things when they're upset. If Monique is allowed to snatch a whole person up that's two feet shorter and 30 pounds lighter, then Candace can continue to say what she wants to say when she wants to say it in these streets of America. Ca, ca. Freedom of speech. Remember that people, we have freedom of speech. And then we also have a judicial system to handle when people can't handle the words you speak and they decide to assault you. So I don't want to go back. I just did some posts on this yesterday, but let's take a minute. It's a good, um, I think it's a good six minutes of interview. I'm just going to let it play and try not to respond. Okay. This past in November, you knew I was going to have something to say about it. And you checked all of my stories. Every single one of them. You checked all of my stories, Chris. You are, don't bullshit me. I'm sorry, Mitchell. Go ahead. Well, RJ, I think because, you know, you played that video a little earlier and I have never seen the entirety of that video. I think I've only seen bits and pieces. But the bit that you saw, that the, the words, the language was very public. And I think you're right. I think there probably does need to be a public uh, apology for what was said because what was said was very dark and you know i'm pretty sure that candace would even say it is inconsistent with her values today let me Hopefully she's able to say that all right let me get on one let's see what he has to say okay okay all right all right okay chris what's up you want to know i so let's do it like this I specifically didn't mention his name because of that. But in the context of what was going on, we're talking about an alleged 
plot, alleged plot. There was no plot. I will tell you that right now. I understand that you're friends with Monique, and that's totally cool. I got nothing but respect for that family, okay? Despite everything that's going down, nothing but respect for them. I will stand here and say to the day I die, there was no plot. My point being, in that particular clip, she exposed the plot on her live. Dude, dude said, Monique posted a live right before that where she talked about the plot. A person directly asked Candace, what plot is Monique talking about? Monique, and Candace said, it, Candace exposed, exposed, you want me to play it on TV? I, trust me, I've seen it a hundred times. I've clip. seen it a hundred times. Andy didn't yeah. roll the clip last night. He didn't roll the clip last night. I can. I know he didn't. So don't trust me, I've seen it. Don't go there. I've, she exposed the plot. Monique exposed it before that. She did it in response to what was going on. And she was there trying was to nothing going on. RJ, nobody talked about it on the show the entire season. It wasn't brought up. Listen, but just follow me on this for two be to the information, but I am. I know exactly who the I know exactly who Gigi talked to. I know exactly who carried it to Giselle. So please, let's not go there. I let's, know, let, let's, let's look at it like this. Just, why did his likeness? Look, okay, first let's back. I'll get. I'll get to that. Let's let's back up for one second. Okay, this 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 baby shower where this is, it's, a, a, a plot supposedly took place was before season four reunion ever filmed. If there was a plot, if there was a plan to bring somebody's family down, it would have been brought up at the reunion. You know why it would have been brought up? They brought it up to production, and when they brought it up to production, production did not want to touch it. Why? Because it is evil. It is evil. Production did not want to touch it, Chris. Who are you talking that's, that's not true. That's not true. So so again, so again, production did okay, let's let's just say let's just say for, for, for argument's sake, that's correct. Production didn't want to touch it, right? So it wasn't brought up on the reunion, which means it wasn't going to be brought up on the show. And then we saw the clip last night of Chris saying, oh, Giselle, don't he look like me? I didn't even know that existed until last night. But even again, it still wasn't talked about on the show. So this season, we didn't see Giselle literally say from her own mouth everything that we heard. Like, you, you didn't see when she put that out there on the show? When she went on Watch What Happens Live and made oh, a comment no. about... Oh, no, literally on the show. When she was like, I heard, you know how she did, she's like, I heard, blah, 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 blah. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, because of everything that happened this season, I didn't watch after episode five. Well, I haven't seen anything after episode five except for the reunion last night. And having any of those in depth conversations with me then. So, what I So, let's go back to your question, the original question. Yes. Right, because I understand where you're coming from. And like I said, I've reached out to you, I reached out to Marcella, I did express my condolences. Everybody on this, everything, listen, can I, dog, let me, let me finish. Please let me finish. You, you, you brought me on. You want to hear what I have to say. So I want to finish and I want to give everybody the background. All right. I want to give everybody the background because everybody that's on this live knows damn well the issues that Kyle and I had in the past. Like it was bad from me, from him. You know, personally, that he and I, while we did, we never came to a complete agreement, we did agree to disagree and we came to a semi understanding. Right. And we. We never got to fully make up, and I expressed to you how terrible I felt for not being able to fully bury that hatchet, right? So, last night, we get to this plot thing, and, and my whole issue, and this is why I didn't say his name, I just said, supporting a blog that, okay? And yes, some people who are much more privy, the ones who are on social media, probably did infer that I was referencing him. But my point being, and, and didn't come across in that, because, and I'm sure Monique told you this too, there was heavy editing from that that thing like it didn't flow right. but anyway point being don't be mad that you think somebody was talking about your kids but support somebody talking bad about someone else's kids that was my only point and that's why i didn't mention his name i didn't mention him directly i just said you support a blog who had a whole lot of shit to say about my kids who, who talked about robin's kids and trust me i'm upset too i don't like my kids talking about it either so i understand what Chris was going through. I really do. Like, I respect Chris to this day. You guys all saw what we talked about at the end after we walked off stage. There was a lot of emotion going on right there from a whole lot of levels. And I understand you being his best friend and being an outside person, how that can upset you. So if that upset you last night, 
I'm going to formally apologize to you right now as well. It wasn't my intent. My intent was to bring awareness. Like, I understand that you're hurting because somebody's talking about your kid and you think that there's this plot to bring you all down. But people's kids get talked about. And unfortunately, and I told Chris this after after the reunion, and um, there were cameras there. I don't know why they didn't show this part either. But reality TV has become, and I respect Monique for saying this uh, today as well, that, you know, it's becoming too much for a lot of people. It has taken a turn. And like I talked on earlier and I heard you say, there used to be a time when, right? Reality TV was fun. But it's all about ratings. It's all about drama. And it's who's going to push the envelope the next. And the sad part is, it may not be our show. It may not even be a housewife show. But I said this to Chris and he looked at me like I was crazy. Somebody's going to end up dead from a violent act because everybody wants the ratings and everybody wants to push the envelope. And it's disgusting. I think it's disgusting. And yes, I have been very vocal on social media at times because I, everyone knows I defend my wife. And the funny part is y'all want to sit here and praise Chris for defending his wife, which I'm glad he did because he should. That's what a man does, defend their wife. But then y'all would dog the fuck out of me for hollering at people for disrespecting my wife. Like you had some not so nice things to say, but I know where you're coming from because you and I, you and I have had conversations and I told you personally that I'm not going down that road again with people. So I understand where you're coming from. I understand you're hurt. Now, I'm not happy with what you're saying, but I'm not going to sit here and call you out your name and say all these other things. Because what does that do at the end of the day? It does nothing for anybody at all. But I understand your hurt. I understand your frustration. I know where you're coming from. And again, I'm going to apologize to you for referencing him. But I did it in a way that I felt was respectful that only people that knew knew would know what I was talking about. And I, so, was that, I was that person. And his mom, and he apologized to his mom as well. His family. Don't look at the comments. No, I'm, I'm going to say because the people are right. I'm, I'm just reading. I'm just reading. And I, I don't disagree with Home, you. In the moment, this is us. This is real. There was a death. Fair Your wife, a death upon her. You brought him up. Now let he, go. Let, let's be honest. He trashed her and had some very disgusting things to say about her for over a year before she even made that comment. Now, that comment was was wrong, 100%. I would tell you that's wrong. But you mentioned something earlier. She didn't know, and I told you this, she didn't know about his condition when she said that. I told her about it after she said that because I told her it was wrong. You don't wish death on people, especially someone. And you can believe it or not, she didn't know. Hand to God, I've been nothing but honest with you, RJ, since the very first day. That when someone is wrong. Because people, when people are angry, much like Chris Samuels, you say things out of anger. He doesn't want to beat women. I don't think Chris wants to beat women, but he Fred, said he wishes he could. He, right? Fred literally was like prepared. She literally sat and said, let me turn on my filter so I can look cute. She and does it on every live. She this does one, it on every live. That, that's one, her. But I, one, I see where you're coming from. I see where you're coming from. This one I mean, is because it had to do with my friend. So she specific to you, not specific to everybody else though. She she does what she does. But to, to look cute because she knew it was going to be recorded. She knew it was going to go around and boy oh boy did it. She does that for all so, of her lives though. And yes it did because yes, she has a mouth. She does. She that's uses it and she she expresses it however she feels in the moment. And yes, he, that's something she needs to work on. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's right. Same way as trying to get somebody killed. Because if you're wishing death upon them to not exist anymore, then you're probably not too far off in that. So, so let me ask you this: the comments. Like, I, so you're going to keep going I, back to the comments? No, to, RJ. No, I'm not. I'm not because I don't want to. I don't want to go down there. But I think and out of respect, RJ. There's a lot of things. Dog, there's a lot of things you you're talking get, about. You're talking about no, you're talking about comments and, and how people perceive words. And I get that. Words hurt, right? But when you weaponize a platform, the multitude of people who also like what's the next question, man? Chris. But no, I just look, I because he, it's he, gonna go down a road. RJ, it's going to go down a road that doesn't need to. And that's something that's something that I want to talk to you about personally. But the thing is, she was so quick to 
When has she never been quick with something, though? She was so quick to clean up her remarks about, about the gays, about, about us. She was so quick. I wonder why. But when it comes to a human being that passed two months after, when it comes to a human being that what the words that she said actually resonated, he actually said, maybe she's right. Maybe I should be dead. When it comes to a human being, she has yet to say anything because no one has put the flames to her butt. And because she can sleep at night, knowing that this man passed, and normally now that I know that you actually told her about, you know, his, him being sick, and she still has not said anything, not a peep, lets me know who she truly is as a person, the person that you married. She's not right, Chris. I'm sorry, but she's not right. Define, define not right. You want me to roll the clip? I've seen the clip, but are, you want, this is what I don't want to do because you're going to force me into a position where I'm going to have to say something I don't want to say out of respect. I can't force you into anything. You wanted to come on this live. You came on my live. No, you wanted me to come on the live. I was just supporting <laughs> on my live. And I said, did. I, you said if you want to talk about it, we can talk about it. Right. To support you, I want to give you that moment that I think you deserve from me. What? What moment? You asked the question about why did I talk? Why did I mention him last night? You wanted an explanation. I'm giving that to you. Oh, let's get that clear. What was that? I, I didn't catch it. The conversation. Not a moment. My life was just fine before we got on. Okay. And, and I mean, I don't, can, can I say? I mean, I just want to know, like, how did she sleep at night? Therapy. A lot of it. Look, we make mistakes. We all make mistakes. And some you can come back from. I hers. She what? Sorry, she's, you cut her. And she, she's yet to rectify hers. Why do you always have to clean up her dirty work? I don't always clean up her dirty work. But there are times where I'm, I'm, old, I'm her husband, man. I married her for the woman that she is. And it's my job to not only support her, but protect her. That's what a husband does. That's what a friend does. That's what Chris did for Monique last night. That, that's what we do, man. Like, nobody's perfect. And, and I told you, and I've said, what she said in regards to Kyle in that moment was fucked up. So when you There's told, no denying it. When, when you have to tell her that wishing death on someone because she hasn't lived like life um, was wrong, what did she say? What was her answer? Because she has an answer for everything. She said, you're right. It is too far. I was angry, and that's how I responded. And then, and, and I will tell you, I will tell you the day that we found out and I told her what would happen, what happened, she, she was upset. She was mad at herself. You can take it or, or leave it, but she was very upset. Not, not to the extent where, you know, Kyle was saying, you know, maybe he should and, you know, nobody should ever feel that way. That that's, it's, it's, you didn't know that. but, but she was, she was upset. She felt horrible. She didn't really have any words because what kind of words do you have at that point? Right? She knows it's not her fault, but she knows that her words do have meaning. She knows well, that. Well, guess what? I won't let her go. I, I don't expect you to. I don't expect you to. I'm not asking you to. I have never once in our conversations, I have never said, can you please not? Can you not do this? Can you not do that? Mm. Right? I've, I've let you with, with the because of the way things were with Kyle and I, I told you specifically, I'm not going to go down that road with you. It's a bad road. I don't want to go down that road. I understand where you're coming from. I respect where you're coming from. And I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to do the back and forth. I'm not going to you know, do anything. And I think you and I, I'm, I'm not going to say like we're friends, but we've kind of, I want to say that there's a mutual respect. And maybe I'm wrong. I mean, that's from what I see. Like, there, there's a little bit of interaction on, on posts and stuff and, and comments. Nothing that's like, oh, hey, we're buddy buddy. But I think it's it's taking a different road than where Kyle and I went. Really, Chris? What? Am I lying? 
you're being disrespectful. To who? To me. How am I being disrespectful to you? He does not need to be mentioned in that way. Look, I'm taking responsibility for what I did. You I never have, had to go. To, what I'm saying is you don't have to give me flowers and then say, oh, it ain't go, you know, we're not going in the direction that you're What I'm saying is, RJ, listen to me. What I'm saying is what I did was wrong. How I handled that situation was wrong. I was I, I had an opportunity to try and get right with Kyle. We sort of got there. It didn't get to where I wanted to. I felt bad. I saw a lot of your posts. I wanted to reach out and express my condolences because that's the type of person that I am. And I want to make sure this is what how we grow in life, right? You make a mistake. You don't want to repeat it. Is that not right? Is that not how life works? You fuck up. You own your fuck up. And then you try to be better about it. And that's what I'm trying to do. Be a better person every single day that I can. And what I'm saying is the road that I went down, I don't want to go down that road anymore with anybody. To be honest, it's not a good road. It's not fun for anybody. And I can literally sit here, listen to what you had to say about my wife, which you I understand grief, mad, anger. That's how you feel. I'm not going to tell you how to feel. And I'm not going to go down that road and say, that's fucked up. Don't talk about my wife like that. Because I understand where you're coming from. And I'm not going to do that back and forth because you deserve better than that. I deserve better than that. People deserve better in life. You can only learn and grow from where you've been. And if you don't do that, then you're a piece of shit. If you cannot recognize where you fucked up and be better, you're a piece of shit. Not you, but people in general. Is that not true? If you repeat the same mistake over and over and over again, and continuously do the same thing over and over and over again, offend people, disrespect people, and can't get your shit straight. Doesn't that say something about you? I'm not. I'm not disrespecting him at all. I've told you several times. If he wasn't talking about my wife, I thought he was a funny guy. I would like his posts. I would comment on his posts. We would have conversations outside of outside of housewives, and I thought he was a really good guy, despite. The things he said about my wife, much like I have told you, I don't like what you say about my wife, but I think you are a good dude. That's all I'm saying, man, it is we as people, as a country, as, as everybody it needs to be better. Like we all have our friends. We all have our favorites. We have this and that. And, you know, my wife and I are on a show and the Sanders are on a show and people are going to like who they like. But as people. I'm not saying you have to like everybody, but there's a level of respect, too. And that goes for me and my wife also. We're not excluded from that. Like, we're people as well, man. Like, I get it. We're on TV and we volunteer to put our shit out there. But the reason we do it is because there's people who live just like us, who have issues that we go through also. And maybe what we go through can help somebody else to be like, you know what? It's not that bad. I can be better. And some people don't like that shit, and that's fine. And that's fine. But sit up here and send me messages and tell me that I need to die, and I'm going to kill you, and you need to get security because I'm going to come up behind you and choke your ass out? Who the fuck are you? Like, what did I do to deserve that? Those are the emails and the DMs that I get. I don't fucking do anything to nobody. You know, I put my shit out there about my oldest son and the difficulties that I've had with his mother and how that situation goes. I don't need to do that. And the DMs that I go, oh, you're a deadbeat. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. Y'all don't know shit. You saw five seconds of a 43 minutes episode of a scene that was filmed for four hours. But the DMs that I get that are like, oh, you give me hope. You know, I've got some issues with my baby mama and, you know, the way that, you know, you're working with the one and still trying to work things out with the other. You know, it gives me hope that maybe someday shit can work out. And that's why I do this shit. Because I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be perfect. I don't claim to be anything other than who I am. And I think what you see right now on this live and what you see on the TV is the same. I'm the same person. I don't put on for anybody. I don't, I don't cap for shit. I am who I am. You're going to get all of me good, bad, and ugly. And when it's ugly, I'm going to own it, and I'm going to try and be better.
Yes, Project Real Talk. I did get on a little bit of a ramble there. My bad. I just had to get it out. So, again, you wanted to know why. I told you why. I apologize to you. I would reach out to his mother as well. I've got her information. You've given that to me, and I will do that as well. Thank you, Chris. Good night. Hey, have a great night. I'm so sorry, Mitchell. Okay. So... That went a little longer than the six minutes I thought it was going to be. Leave your comments below on if you feel like the host, that Allen guy, was attacked by Chris Bassett because, of course, that's what Team Monique people are saying now, is that this man went on here and attacked the remaining black socialite dude, Allen, and said somehow that conversation we just witnessed was some kind of attack. I am not sure what's in the Kool-Aid, people, but stay away from the Kool-Aid table if you want to remain in control of your own thoughts. Remember, God gave you eyes and a mind and a heart, right? So when he gives you eyes, it's so you can believe what you see. It's not so you can believe what Monique and her camp tells us we should believe. You need to believe what your eyes are showing you and what you saw with your own eyes rather than all of this spin that is attempting to happen. And I still think that her quitting, Monique Samuels quitting, is fake because she already signed the contract. So I wouldn't be surprised if later they say something about, well, she already signed the contract, so she has to appear. All of this is just PR hype. Still got the Black Socialites. Hey, you know what? For fun, you can go to the Black Socialites on Instagram and scroll back even 19 weeks when Kyle, the person that they were just speaking about in the video, when he was still alive, him and Monique did a, a live, um, an IG thing 19 weeks ago where he was allowing her to use his platform to spin her story and get it out there. Because I was wondering where all these um, Mo heads came from, Team Monique heads. Like, what are they seeing? Why are they so amped up? Well, Candace Dillard Bassett and Chris Bassett, as you just heard, were the topic of many conversations on their website, um, their IG, Instagram account, rather. And it's still up. And it's quite fascinating the amount of mean memes towards Candace Dillard, the amount of just hatefulish evilness beyond um, funny. Like that was that shit wasn't funny. Go look at some of the stuff they posted. That's the torture that Candace feels like she was put through at the hands of the black socialites person, Kyle, who passed on. Which caused her to say, go back and look at what she he posted on her. That's forever in, in digital space. And then wonder if you would say, damn, I wish that person would die posting all these lies about me. Because people would see that and then go to Candace Dillard Bassett's IG or her site and threaten her and tell her she should die and all this other stuff. So she said that the source of the issues that she was having should be gone. And of course, she did not wish that man death like that. She had no idea. He had pre-existing conditions. She had no idea. So anyway, thanks for turning in to Larger Curves. I'm, I'm obviously going to post some more about this later. Smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. Leave a comment, turn on that bell, peace.